All right, welcome back to another episode of Jim Eat Repeat, the podcast. Today we have on Pro Beat Bikini competitor, Alana Coleman, who is referred to as Lonnie, and I think that's how everyone knows her. She is a relatively newer competitor within the past three years or so. She's really made her mark at, as a pro. Um, you know, she's done over 22 shows. I think she's won more than half of them. She's taken home a ton of prize money. And, you know, her, her resume really speaks for, for itself. So I wanted to bring her on today and, and find out how she's doing all of this and making so much noise in the industry. So welcome to the show, Lonnie. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? All right. Good to see you. I haven't seen you or spoken to you really since since the Mr. America. It How did you recover that, after that? It's been a, a, a moment there. Um, October? I mean... Yeah, man, we're we're almost pushing we're, April now. I know. Um, so I saw that you also retired. Is this true? I I did retire. Um, okay. I I I haven't quite um, allowed myself to settle with that situation, but um, yeah, I I definitely have decided to step away and um, let others uh, take on. The battle. Yeah, well, I mean, you definitely left your mark on on bodybuilding and definitely, you know, in, in pro bikini, you know, even more because I don't know if there's a bikini competitor out there that's accomplished what you have in such a short amount of time. So you've won, you've won 10 pro shows. Yes. Yep. Like, what, what, what is, what is that like in, in two years, right? Uh, yeah, it, essentially two years, um, covid Kind of took uh took over a little of that area there, but um, I don't know. You know, honestly, it it's not that it hasn't sank in, but I I have to remind myself that not every athlete's story is mine, and right, you know, some people some people I wouldn't say are gifted, but um, maybe genetics do sort of play a little role there but um you know the the cookie crumbled and um i just happened to be at the right place at the right time 10 times 10 times Fun you were times. at the right place <laughs> at the right time so that's that's pretty impressive so you know you were competing you know all season you know april through through november or march through november you know you never really lost it right a lot of people try to compete you know throughout an entire season like that and you know sometimes they just start looking worse by the end of the year but you came in and you've nailed your mark each and every single time and even shows that you didn't win you were you were right up there you know for that win it's not nobody blew your doors off how do you hold right, such absolutely great conditioning yeah um i mean you know the first win that that alone um it it wasn't that that created the addiction it, it was the first show that created the addiction but um every win that beyond that it felt like the first time and it's not that it didn't feel like it was supposed to be mine but hearing my name being called as first it's not that it didn't get old but like oof, every time it was just like me <laughs> Here yeah, I am you're doing again. again. Like... Wow. That's, yeah, it's, it's really amazing. And, you know, not only your bodybuilding resume, you know, and, and your personal biography, you know, you've come from a place that maybe nobody's even heard of, right? There, yeah. You only had 40 people in your graduating class. Yes. So what was, what was that like growing up in such a small town where, I mean, you literally know everybody? I mean, honestly... Um, as a, as a child, I used to think, oh my gosh, you know, everyone knows my business. Everyone knows my business. You know, you, you can't walk outside without people knowing that you're outside type thing. Right. <laughs> but, um, I'm so grateful. I, I, to all like parents who, who would have the opportunity to put their kids in a smaller school, um, take that opportunity having that one-on-one -on -one with your uh, teachers, allowing a proper education, um, you know, really knowing who everyone is in your class. And yeah, um, 
I was a super athlete in school, but mm -hmm. my name wasn't like known, known, but people knew who I was as an athlete. So um, I, I definitely appreciate that small town. Yeah, they, you know, there's definitely something to be said about, you know, having that smaller town feel where you do get a lot more one on one with your teachers. And, you know, that paid off for you in a big way. You know, you graduated in the honor society with like a, a 4.0 GPA, like 4.2. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, so that is uh, another huge success that you've had in your life. You know, so between your sports and, and your education, you were also the only female wrestler in your high school. I was. Um, I started wrestling uh, my freshman year. Um, there was actually a few girls when well, hang, hang on, we hang. were growing up. How did up. you get into that? How would <laughs> what made you want to do that? I I literally even to this day I try to be so abnormal because life is so short to be like the same and like trendy. Like I I literally love to be that person that sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> I, and I don't know. I just I knew wrestling was gonna have me sticking out like a sore thumb. So, and how, how like, was okay. your how was your wrestling career? How did you do with that? Um. So, <laughs> I I just I started in freshman year. So the people that were wrestlers, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sugarcoat things. Um, being in a 106 class, uh, the boys there were fast. They weren't meaty, but they were fast. And if you weren't <laughs> quick, they were going to pin you down. Um, so I actually had only had one win, and it was against my first ever um, competitor. And I ended up, um, you know, let's just say she had to tap out because she couldn't breathe. And, okay. Um, that, that was my first and my only win. <laughs> Okay, but you got one. I got one. <laughs> and was that in freshman year or was that later on? I think that was um, in my 10th grade. So I versed her in, as a freshman, and then I came back sophomore year and I beat her. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> so school was very successful for you. Your bodybuilding was very successful for you. And while you were in high school, you had some type of opportunity that really opened doors for you. What, what was that? Oof, kind of, <laughs> you know, actually, you probably don't want me to go down this path. <laughs> I, 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 so before you go any further, um, I think it's great if we do. And yep. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. There's people out there that are, you know, trying to become as awesome as you and trying to be as successful as you, right? So from the outside looking in, people may look at Lonnie and say, oh my God, she's so awesome. She's so perfect. She has all these wins. You know, she <laughs> retired at the top of her game. Like, how did, how did she get there? You know, what set up your life of success in not just bodybuilding, but in, in education and, and professionally? So you've done more than just be successful in one thing. You're successful in numerous roles in your, your entire life. Absolutely. So, um, I, I, so I, think it's a, I think it's fair if you're okay talking about it. Yeah. I'm I'm not ashamed of anything that I've ever done. Actually, one of my favorite things is saying that there's absolutely nothing in my life that I regret because at one point in my life I decided that that was what I wanted to do. So and that's what made I you who you to are today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I had a very supportive parents. Um, they literally it wasn't that they let me do whatever I wanted to do, but I had a strong head and I had a plan. And it was a bucket list. So I I wanted to be a dancer. Um, and by dancer, uh, exotic dancer is exactly okay. where I went. And um, it was I a too, bucket list. I, I too had a, a a stint in that world. Yes. Not as a dancer, though. <laughs> but go uh, ahead. <laughs> there, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, bodies in general. I mean, okay, so everyone thinks of bodies as, you know, Everyone has their own thoughts, but um, there is a a massive money making world out there. And yeah, no, there there's extents. There's things that right. obviously did not occur. But um, 
I was making a lot of money and I would uh, I'd work until like two in the morning. I'd get home about three o'clock and I'd be up uh, 630 again and ready for school. And back at it. Right back at it. And, you know, there was a lot of people, you know, whispering, you know, trying to figure out what it was that I was doing or they knew what I was doing. And you you can make up what you want to about anyone that you want. Um, but you don't you don't know someone until you actually can like dig into them. So I I had a hard time uh actually wanting to go to school during right. this time because was the money getting was the money kind of taking over where you're like I don't need school I could just make all this money uh, well actually um like you said I I, I graduated with a 4.2 GPA I turned in my homework I made sure that absolutely nothing was late I passed my tests with flying colors unfortunately I just didn't want to be there with people that I felt weren't playing a part in my life um right in the positive way and also I was learning at a pace that I wanted to learn at which was 10 times faster than sitting in a classroom so right I I did what I wanted to do all right so you know again an another success right you weren't the dancer that people were you know throwing go away dollars at right because you were making Absolutely. money Absolutely. <laughs> and <laughs> and you had fun doing that so how how did that translate into fitness so i mean obviously um pole dancing is a very no joke. strong fit oh my gosh <laughs> pretty sure i was more fit then than i am now <laughs> no maybe uh like grip strength but um so i kind of transitioned from uh being a dancer to a full-time job because i figured it would look a little bit better on papers but right. um in the means of that, I actually I gave myself an ultimatum. I was either going to choose going to the gym or having cable TV. And I was like, no cable TV. I'm going to go to the gym. So I signed up for my first uh, gym membership at Anytime Fitness. Needless to say, um, I signed up for two years. And in that amount of time, I think for like the first like month I went 10 times and that was it that was it that was that a wrap it. you didn't you didn't you didn't quite find that that passion that you know you seem to have now and and throughout your bodybuilding career right away yeah what was there was there a switch that went off that or, or somebody that you know said hey you know why don't you look into this actually um so I started to implement little things in my life um, at home, we had a snack drawer and okay. it had all like bad snacks in it. And there was just like one day where I was like, no, like we need to stop buying all these bad snacks. So yeah, you do the dumb thing where you go to the grocery store and you buy all this healthy food and now you're stuck with it. I have just a whole fridge full of fruits and vegetables. And I'm like, I have to eat these. Like we were rich or anything at that point um but i knew that we spent the money so we had to eat it right however it, it kind of like spiraled from there so you know we started implementing more fruits and vegetables which as, as a family we, yep okay and then it slowly turned into meal prepping and at this point i wasn't doing like a lot of working out but just you know meal prepping making sure that i'm bringing good food to work and it it wasn't necessarily just a cost thing but it did make um the cost of uh eating much less uh expensive yeah you know that that is that is one thing you know initially people say oh my god it's so expensive to to go into bodybuilding all the food you have to eat but when you're when you're meal prepping and all of your food and your calories are all accounted for i think you actually end up saving money because oh, all gosh. of your food is portioned out I think that's the best thing you could do if, if you're actually trying to be on a on a strict food budget every week or every month is actually, you know, weigh and measure all your food out. And like long run wise, uh, all the medical bills that you're not having to expend for. I I'm, promise I'm you, I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that. 
you know, there's so many things that, you know, bodybuilders benefit from, you know, because you're eating so healthy all the time, because you're active all the time, your immune system, you know, is in high gear and you're just, you're cruising through life and you're feeling great. Yeah. You're just feeling great. So physically you're, you're feeling great, right? And you're, you're looking better. I know you had some struggles with OCD, you said, correct? <laughs> yeah. And so how has that helped or, or hurt you, you know, in, in, in life, you know, and, and growing up and, and, you know, getting into dancing and, you know, finally going to a gym and, and becoming, becoming this world champion, you know, did that play a role in it? Definitely. Um, so, uh, I don't have the Jeremy OCD just so we're clear, but, um, <laughs> well, everybody's different, right? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, as for OCD, um, my organization skills are through the roof, almost annoying, but, but it does make my life super simple. Um, I, I started out, uh, with a Fitbit and I started implementing, uh, just doing like 5,000 steps a day. And then right. I was like, oh, that's easy. You know, like 10,000 steps, that's easy. And I was getting like 20, 25 and it became like addictive, controlling, but addictive. Right. And it made sure, you know, I was staying on top of my game. But then I started to pull more things in. Uh, and honestly, like from, you know, good snacks to meal prepping to steps to, well, now I'm implementing a small like workout circuit. And every single day I would slowly start to add a little bit more. And this is where like baby steps in life. It became a challenge to you. What's that? It became a challenge to you to see yeah. that Fitbit, you know, look at your calories burned and your yes. steps taken. Yeah. Interesting. What more can I add? What more can I add? And it wasn't, you know, bite it all off at one time because we know that that's impossible. You know, you, you had to like slowly start bringing one thing in and then the next thing in and and then it became a lifestyle. And next thing you know, I'm doing a workout in the morning that's like an hour long. I'm having to wake up a little bit earlier, but I'm waking up earlier. They say the early bird gets the worm. I, <laughs> they sure that's do. That's me. <laughs> I literally am out. I'm up at three o'clock in the morning every single day, whether I'm in prep, whether I'm out of prep, like I'm, I'm constantly on the go. And that I honestly do believe is what separates the elite from even the pros. The, from the, the best from the rest. That's what I like to say. Yeah. And, and you are in that best category. Yeah. So this is a lifestyle for you and it's been for, for, for a while now. Oh, well, yes. Um, so you're, you are retired, so nobody's expecting you to have, you know, like a perfect glute hamstring tie in right now, but are you <laughs> still sport? Are you still sporting abs right now? Oh, yes. I, I would say I would show you, but I, I stupidly wore a, a bodysuit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not going to work then. That's not going to work. <laughs> but so that's, that's great because, you know, so many people when they're done competing or even just when their season is over. They, they really let themselves go. Yeah. And, you know, this, this really is a lifestyle. I think the best competitors out there are the ones like you and like a Meshach and, and an Arius Norris. You guys are in shape, you know, all year round. Year round. You know, yep. and I think that does make it a little bit easier going into a show because you're like, all right, I just need to tighten up, you know, a, a little bit. You know, you're not have to, you don't have to undergo. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to undergo, you know, a 20 week prep to, get to where you need to be yeah no so i absolutely that, agree are you, are you going to try to stay in shape even though you're not competing oh, yeah yeah i see i see on social media you're 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 hitting the gym you you train with mr america himself me shack all the time we see you have you know putting him through some some wild circuits how'd you get him to do that it, you know it, even when we're going to uh make the videos to to get these exercises in He'll sit there and he's like, come on, Lonnie. You know, I can't do that. And I was like, you can do it. And he's you make like, him do it. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yes. I love it. That, that's, <laughs> that's great. Well, who knows? Maybe that'll, uh, it may change his physique and then, you know, do something different for him. Who knows? Yeah. And, you know, you, you grew up in such a small town, like really in the middle of nowhere. It was. And, 
we have two of the top competitors, you know, the top one of the top bikini competitors and one of the top bodybuilders, like your neighbors. How did how did you guys meet? It was this was this a planned thing? Did you both decide like, hey, we're just gonna go kick ass and be the best that there is? <laughs> so um I I actually met Meshack through um I will call her my mentor. Um her name is Jesse Ostrowski. She was a posing coach for me for my first ever competition. Um we were at uh the Natural Olympia. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh the one good thing I got out of the Natural Olympia was Meshack. Um I found out he lived literally 15 minutes from me and we created this bond and at first it it wasn't that I I didn't want to work out with him, but I was so stuck in my ways of, you know, I had to do this, this, and that. And if I went out of my, my norm, like, oh, you know, there goes my competition. Like, I, I won't be able to make it to stage. But then all of a sudden, I decided to let my walls down. And I was like, okay, I can meet up with Meshack. We'll work out. Uh-huh. And now it's just been, I mean, every every Friday yeah. now, we're just smashing work with them pretty regularly then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's He's awesome. in uh, Kenya right yeah. now, so yep. unfortunately, I don't get to see him on Friday. But next, he'll Friday. be back soon. Yes, he'll be back soon. We're actually looking at uh, doing like a a boot camp seminar, starting I up saw some that. Where, boot camps. Where are you going to be doing that? Let um, everybody know so they can come check it out. Yeah, absolutely. It it'll either be in Madison or Sun Prairie. It, we'll be switching up locations just for individuals to be able to get there. Um, right. But they'll be starting in May, so I'm, I'm yeah, super once, excited. Once you have all that solidified, we'd love to help you know pump that up for you and and, and yeah. put it out to everyone. You know, we you know part part of the thing that we do with the Mister America is you know our our motto is lifting the human spirit, and we try to create opportunities for athletes. Right. Yeah. That's that's very important to me personally. It's very important to the brand, um, which is why we do a lot of the things that we that we do do. So if we could help you in any way and and Put put that out there, and I would love to see Misha teaching a boot camp class. <laughs> so we need to make that That's happen. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you met him at the Natural Olympia. So what is that? Two was that 2019 or 20? 20? Uh, 20, 2020. At, at the Golden Nugget, correct? Yep. Right. So how did so you competed there? How did how did you do? What was your experience like there? So we we talk. Um, you know, a little bit about uh, don't don't go where you don't feel wanted. Um, this is the one federation that I decided to open up about because um, politics are not supposed to be a part of competitions. Uh, I want a fair judging panel. The Natural Olympia, um, that was an experience. And, you know, any uh, athlete that decides to do it, I will never tell you not to do it. You can definitely take a part of the experience. Go for it. Everyone deserves an opportunity. Um, so so do so. But if you do not affiliate with PNBA, if you are not one of their regular athletes, do not expect to be seen, to be placed to be anything besides a, a little number like it, you're you're nothing <laughs> where where did you place there i took i think seven okay and there was and that was that was a that was a big class too 16 i think 16 or 15 one of the two i know i placed over half um okay but yeah it the other thing um and it, it Competition isn't about, you know, uh, money. Really, like I said, um, I, I'm i there for, I want the titles. I wanted Mr. America's title. I came right. so close. <laughs> very close. But uh, Very close. No, very, very close. I, I'm, I'll also be grateful for who I did lose to because Misty is a, a one hell of a competitor. Um, yeah. But uh, when... When a federation tells you, um, you know, this much money is up for grabs, blah, 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 blah. 
you got to read between the lines. Um, not on every federation. Most federations are pretty, uh, pretty transparent. Like, with yeah, what you, doing. you get what you get. But for PNBA, um, they have things that you should kind of look into, uh, such as how many athletes you're stepping on stage with. So they might be offering a hundred thousand dollars in awards if you have like twenty five athletes per per category. And right. now they've opened up their categories. Like, I don't know, I think there's maybe like 13 pro categories or something to that sort. There, yeah, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. You know, and that, and, and that, that brings up an interesting point. Um, we see a lot of uh, advertising prior to events uh, about, about prize money and things that are promised. And I know as far as my athletes go and where I've sent my athletes, it isn't always what they're putting out you know there was people yeah. you know uh, talking about you know other federations promising a certain amount of money next year if something happens this year and it creates a lot of confusion and then you know people they're 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 not getting paid what was advertised and there's always some type of there's always some type of nonsense yeah. and you know running the mr america we don't advertise our prize money because we want people to come for that iconic title. You know, I don't want to tell people, you know, hey, I'm putting out X X amount of dollars, you know, like it's up for grabs, and then you get people coming out of the woodwork, right? We want the best of the best because we're 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 a non sanctioned show. We're not affiliated with any organization. Everybody's welcome. So I feel that what I'm doing, it's because of what I've learned from places that I've promoted in the past. Yeah. And you know, I was I was promoting with the PNBA. I'm right. I'm I actually remember that now. Yeah, I'm. I'm no. Lo I no longer promote with them. I have no ill will towards them. I wish them the best of luck. I wish everybody would go do the Natural Olympia, because it is one of those experiences where you, you do get title. to compete. Yeah, and I understand. You know, there are people that have problems with it. They complain about testing. They complain about expense. They, you know, people complain about all types of things. But you still need to understand that they do have something that a lot of athletes want, and you know, most of the organizations. You know, year end shows are all pretty kick ass. Oh yeah. Right. And 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 long as long as all the organizations could play nice together and nobody steps on each other's toes as far as dates, I think every athlete should really try to make their way through all of those circuits for Things that experience. Cool. Yeah. Yes. I, I that's that's really important to me. And you know, that's why we, part of the reason I do what I do, you know, we we gave out pro cards this this past year for for the amateurs that that won the overalls. We had 11 different organizations all honoring pro status. Yeah. And it's Which because it's because we're yeah, like it's because we're we're not affiliated with with anybody. So I want to I'm going to keep pushing that forward. You know, the more I could do for the athletes the better and I'm transparent about what I'm doing. Um, yeah. however, I will never announce my prize money until most of my registration classes are closed. And honestly, I did want to come back to that. Um I I have seen um a partial side of being a promoter. I do think that that is 100% okay because that allows you to, one, see who's truly going to be there. Because a lot of right. people, a lot of athletes can say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Well, you know, some things happen. We've had athletes that... sign up and not show up. No call, exactly. no show, and you can't get in touch with them. Yep. Yep. Um. So banking your prize payouts on who's actually going to be there is one of the smartest things as a promoter. I honestly think that you could do. Well, I appreciate that. You know, but like I said, you know, that like the, the title is really the, the most important thing to me. Oh my gosh. And, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and with that, you know, we do have huge plans for the Mr. America and especially what we're going to be doing with the pros for next year. Um, and you know, prize money, not, I mean, it's never going to be an issue. You know, we're, we're, yeah. we're going to have it and we're going to be right there with everybody else. And we will exceed that by far shortly um Amen. yeah so all right so now we we know you know you've had this really successful you know career career in bikini do you think like there's haters out there right <laughs> and oh, yeah. and when you're when you're at the top you know you have people below you looking to knock you off that off that top ledge how do you how do you deal with that do you get any negative you know messages or, or any negativity through social media that you know might get in your head i'm gonna have to be honest 
I, if there are haters, which we know, you know, not everyone can be loved. They're doing a really good job of covering it up because, I mean, for people that do know me, I'm a super positive person. I'm I'm gonna be positive whether I win or I lose. I'm gonna be your friend at the end of the day. Um, you know, at the end of the show, like I want to party with the people that I step on stage with. Um, right. So, do I? Do I think there's haters? Yeah, there's always gonna be. Um, someone wants to take that position, and that's okay. That's okay. I. That's what competition is. We we right. are supposed to be there to compete with one another to make each other's life a living hell. But <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, um, I mean, I I'm stepping down personally because. I feel my mission has been completed. I've I've been this way for quite some time. Once I'm good at something, it's not that I'm bored, but I'm bored. Like I'm ready for the next thing. So right. Who knows where All that? Right. Uh, who knows where that'll put me? <laughs> well, only time will tell, I guess. That's true. <laughs> right. So you've competed. You know, you've you've done all these shows. You've competed in many different organizations. One, you know, the the. Biggest titles there are in many organizations. What's that like? You know, you're, you're going from organization to organization, you know, different show promoters. You know, what are some of the things that you found work for an event or don't work for an event, you know, based on all of shows that you've done? So strangely enough, um, I'm a super easygoing individual. Um, I mean, I like to make sure that everything's perfect when I come to the stage. But as an athlete, as a as an athlete, I'm looking for a promoter who offers a stage that has fair judging. That is really what I the most important I thing. I feel every athlete deserves that. And I don't care if we were outside in the boondocks on this stage, as long as we have fair judging, I would be the happiest athlete. In the entire world, so have really, you felt ultimately, you've been judged unfairly anywhere. What's that? Have you felt that you've been on, uh, you know, unfairly judged anywhere? Yeah, yeah. Um, there were a couple of shows that I stepped on stage last year, and um, you know, it just like the Midwest, we have our clicks. So the South is also going to have their clicks. Um. Right. I, you know, you, you just, you take it for what it is. Um, you know, whether it comes down to politics or not, it, it is what it is. You know, as an athlete signing up for something that you're at risk of being judged and you just have to be satisfied with what you bring to the stage and there, there was a time where I had lashed out uh, in the very beginning of me competing, and I realized, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't fair for me to say what I needed to say or what I felt I needed to say. Right. It just looks better as an athlete to just smile, and you just don't go there again. You know, it, right. if you feel like you're in a space where you don't feel like your physique is welcome, there are so many more federations that do like what you have. Well, yeah, and it looks like most of them all like what you have. <laughs> so you're you're you, again you're 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 killing it. You you know won the ANBF Nationals, the USBF Championships twice, Mister Miss Ohio, Pharaohs of the North. Like I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on of the the shows that you've won. And you know, sitting here talking to you today, you know, we've we've talked briefly in the past, right? You know, yeah, at a, at a few shows and, and you know on the phone a couple of times. You are another great representation of what a pro athlete should be. You are, you're very humble. You recognize that like, hey, you know, there are going to be some things out of your control, but you take it, you know, for what it's worth and you, you keep it moving. And that hasn't stopped you from becoming, you know, the champion that you are. So with that, my hat's off to you, you know, for being that humble professional athlete, as I wish more athletes, you know, would actually be like that. So anybody out there listening that's going to be competing you know, especially in in bikini, I think Lonnie is a, a great role model and somebody definitely to pick her brain 
on you know doing the things that she did with all of all of her accomplishment. Monty, how do you <laughs> how do you stay in shape all year? Like you know from show to show. You know we talked about it briefly before, but from show to show, like you don't you don't miss a beat. So yeah. are are you dieting all season? Or are you just you know prepping for a few weeks when into a show? What 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 do you do? Um, I use the term I I don't stray too far from the sidewalk, um, and I don't I. Yes, for the people that know me, I love crumble, but <laughs> I work my ass off still. When I'm out of season, I'm I'm still pushing like fifty thousand steps a day, and I know that sounds psycho, but. Do not have a car. That's a lot of steps. <laughs> do, you, do you need? Do you need a car? Do you want us to send you a car? <laughs> you want a car? No. Um, no, I do have a car. Um, I just enjoy walking, and you know, and a lot of people spend so much time um, in prep, you know, doing like hard cardio, um, you know, treadmill, um, stair stepper, so on and so forth. I have never in my entire life through prep ever done any of them. I only wow. walk. Wow. I have never done cardio. I mean, where walking. are you getting all of these steps in? <laughs> so I still I wake up at three. Um, I walk my dogs in the morning from about three to four thirty, and by then I have already like twelve thousand steps before I even get to the gym. Um, Yikes. <laughs> by the time I get uh, out of the gym, it's about six thirty, um, and I'm at about fifteen thousand to seventeen thousand steps, and then I spend the rest of my day at work. Um, I work in a an eye care clinic, but my office okay. is a little cubicle area. Well, not little, but it's, it's a area in which I walk circles all day. Wow. <laughs> All right. So you, you must be blowing through shoes like crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So as, as, as a bikini pro, um, do you feel that the bikini athletes are getting the recognition that they deserve? Or do you think that sometimes bikini is looked down upon? Uh, I mean, honestly, I think bikini is probably one of like the more popular groups we're we're I sexy agree. we're we're beautiful and muscular like i mean I, I don't know how you find a better duo but uh yeah no i i definitely think maybe from the time i started competing to now like i think bikinis definitely it has made its breakthrough it it definitely has you know it's it's one of the larger classes yeah and you know bikini competitors do have it all, you know. You have yeah. the the body and the sass and yes. the beauty, like everything. It's 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 really the complete package. And you know, bikini, even since you started, the look is always evolving in bikini. Oh yeah. So how do you like? I mean, you're winning so many shows. Like you're just nailing it each and every time. So have have you had to adjust your training or or your nutrition to try to keep up with that, or do you just keep bringing your best? Um, uh, even for athletes that I'm currently training, one thing I like to keep in mind is no matter, no matter who steps on stage with you, your physique will never be theirs. So you must base your physique off from your physique. If you feel your body fat percentage, your weight, your, you know, whatever, I, I, I never, I never even weigh myself before I step on stage. I couldn't even tell you what my stage weight is. Don't know. Don't know. Um, it might, is it, is it, is it your wrestling weight? Is it 106? <laughs> no, it, <laughs> it, I will tell you it's closer to 120. Right. Um, <laughs> but if, if you don't feel good stepping on stage, probably not. So when I wake up Saturday morning, I know if, like, I'm where I should be. Right. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably it's probably not. That is, you know, really good because, you know, so many people, you know, they're jumping on the scale and then, you know, all week, you know, going into a show saying, you know, hey, I know, you know, 
my last show I won and I was 122 pounds. I need to hit 122 and, you know, they're 123 or 124. And they're like, oh my God, you know, my whole day is off. My peak week was wrong. And, you know, I didn't do enough. And they start second guessing themselves where you seem to, I don't want to say never have that problem, right? I don't know how you feel when you get up and put your suit on. But every time you step on stage, you have such confidence. <laughs> and, you know, I, I've been noticing that, you know, when not everybody has it, but the top competitors all walk out onto stage owning the stage. You know, yeah. they come out with the attitude, I'm I'm here to rock. Everything's yep. perfect. Nothing can ruin my day today. Yep. And do you, do you purposefully go onto stage or do you just feel that? Um, so confidence in that cocky um always walk on to stage as if you won the title those are a couple things that i play in my head um but when i do step on stage it's a dominance thing like i want your attention and i will do what i need to to feel i've brought that attention so yeah no i it, it's definitely a mental process um but when I'm when I'm there, I make sure it's like I'm there. You know I'm there. Yeah, you're on every every time. I haven't seen you not on. And you know, <laughs> win win or lose, you're just you're just there. You're killing it. Thank you. You know, and, you know and, and and only the top athletes are really actually doing that. So I really think you know that that may be the separation point between you know first place and and fifth place. You know, because, you know, in, in so many of the shows now, they're so competitive, you know, first, second, third, you know, so many times could go so many different ways. But as you drop down lower into the, the classes, you really, you don't see that same confidence from everyone. I would agree. Yeah. So, it, guys out there, fake it if you have to, but you come on stage and you show that confidence, it really does put you in a whole new light. Yeah. So yep. that that's. That's a great tip. You know, it's great to hear that you're saying that. And, you know, our, our last guest, you know, same thing, you know, Shannon, uh, Shannon Kelly, she comes out and she, she owns the stage, right? And she comes out and commands that attention and, and you yes. do the same. And, you know, I'm noticing that trend. The people that don't command the attention aren't getting those top placings. Yeah. So way to own it. So <laughs> you're a big fan of Crumble Cookie. <laughs> If you could have only one crumble cookie, what would it be? Fried ice cream. Fried ice cream. That's the one. Hands down, the best cookie. It is so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Well, Lonnie, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. We're, gonna, uh, we're definitely going to come back and have you on again. Um, I think there's a lot more that people want to know about you. And, you know, on a personal level and a, and a professional level, like I'm, I'm, really blown away by some of the things I've heard and, you know, the many great successes you've had. So, you know, congratulations to you, you know, you know, from the Mr. America and, and everybody here, we wish you the best of luck in all your endeavors, you know, moving forward. And, you know, we'd, we'd love to have you this year, even if it's just front row in the audience. Hey, that's where I'll be. I promise you. Excellent. The one show I'm making it to for sure. All right. Well, nothing's going to stop you, right? Nope. Nothing. Awesome. I already Excellent. have it blocked off. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Did you book your flight? I don't have that book. I haven't decided if I'm going to drive or not. Maybe I'll walk. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, you probably could in probably like two days, the way you're moving around every day. We should go we should Google how many steps it takes to get from there to Atlantic City. And then We're I think you need could do that. It. I think <laughs> you could I think you could do it. <laughs> I guarantee you I could. <laughs> All right, everybody, you know, thank you for listening. You know, be sure to check out Lonnie and, you know, her boot camps when they're coming up. We'll be sure to post them, and I'm sure she'll be posting them on, on her Instagram. Um, just as a reminder, October 6th through 8th in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Mr. America All-American Sports Festival. We'll see you there. Sports.